Mr. Fraser, let's talk. I came here to apologize for the way that I acted at the hospital. Well, I understand. You have every right to hate me. I, I hate myself. I don't hate you. But you must understand how difficult this is for me. I never meant to cause you any more grief or your family than I already have. The phone calls, the visits. But I had to do something. Something to try and tell you that I am truly sorry for... I know that you didn't mean to do it. I should have come to see you sooner, but I couldn't face it. I... I couldn't face you. I can't face myself. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I look in the mirror and I see... your husband. Dead because of me. Don't punish yourself. I killed two people! What if I hadn't been drunk? It was New Year's Eve. There were a lot of people drinking and driving. Yeah, but it was me that swerved into their part of the road. It was me. Carol, my wife, asked me not to go to the party without her. Our daughter was sick. Why didn't I stay home? Why? I've asked why many times myself. That's not for us to know. Only God knows. I... I haven't told anyone this before. I feel that... that I'm partly to blame, too. You? Scott and Mother were... Re they were returning home after they dropped me at the hospital. Scott wanted me to quit my job. If I had, the hospital wouldn't have called me in to work that night. But you had no way to know that Neither I... did you. But I was drunk, not them. I... I have no right to ask your forgiveness. All I ask is that you understand that I'm sorry. This afternoon, for the first time, I realized what you're going through. I've almost accepted the loss of Scott and Mother. It still hurts me very much, but I don't blame you. I could tell you that I forgive you, but I think you need something more than that. But then maybe at least I could, I could live with myself. I can't do that now. I forgive you. Thank you. It doesn't erase my guilt. But it'll make it easier to cope with what I've done. I don't really think you need my forgiveness. It's God's. Even God's forgiveness won't bring them back. Nothing will. But with his forgiveness, you'll get some peace. He knows your heart. Just ask him. That seems so easy. How do I know he'll forgive me? Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for all our faults and mistakes, no matter how great or small. Forgiveness is God's gift to us. But what, what, how do I... You just pray to him. You open your heart to him. Have faith. Accept his love. Can you help me? Just repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. 
I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. Well, the front door is locked and her coat isn't in the hall closet. There's no sign she's been home. Ben, I'm getting even more worried. Where could she be? Have you checked the Cummings? I called Liz while you were upstairs. She said she hasn't seen Mom since yesterday. Maybe he got her. Now, honey, your mother probably just went shopping. I don't think so. Look, this phone book is turned to insurance companies. Maybe that was her way of telling us that he was here. She couldn't leave a note. Lori, you're imagining things. Hi. What, no supper? Is that all you can think about? Food? Well, no. I, I worked a couple hours overtime. I worked up a big appetite. So that's where you were. Instead of home. Where you should have been. What's with her? Where's Mom? Your mother's not here. Lori's a little worried that something might have happened to her. Do you have any idea where she might be, Peter? Well, no, I, I called here to tell her I was going to be working late. There was no answer. I, I just figured she's going to work late, too. Uh, no, she's not. The car's not in the garage? No. The only clue we have is this phone book. It's turned to insurance listings. Dennis Frazier. You think? I don't know what to think. Let me look at that. Yeah? That's him. Dennis Frazier. Well, let me call that number. Mom! Are you all right? Oh, well... Where have you been? You had us worried. I'm fine. And so is Dennis Fraser. So you were with him. Yeah, come on, sit down. I'll tell you what happened. Here. Oh, thank you, Ben. Why, is he in jail or what? Oh, no, on the contrary, he's been set free. Mr. Fraser came to the hospital today to visit me. He was a very troubled man. All those calls were to tell me how sorry he was about the accident. Scaring us with strange phone calls is a fine way to show it. Yeah, I know, but he didn't know what else to do. Well, anyway, when he came to me at the hospital, I'm afraid I reacted rather badly. And later, I realized that I was going to have to talk with him. You went to see him? Yes, I did. We had a long talk, and we prayed together. And he asked the Lord to forgive him. He accepted Jesus? Yes. He's a changed man. Oh, praise God. Oh, Mother. I am so glad that something good has come out of this tragedy. I just thank God for that. Yes, Mr. Redland was to finish that report last night. We do realize how important it is to your company. Yes, sir. I'll have him return your call. Yes, I will. You don't have to blow a fuse. Oh, Jean, am I glad to see you. Yep. Mr. Hawkins with C&J Construction just called. Yep. He's really anxious to know the results of your report. <gasps> oh, no. You left it at home? Oh, I forgot to do it. But I'll get on it right away. I'll try to stall him. This isn't like you, Jean. Is it the situation with Carla? Yeah, she still has Jimmy. I'm sorry. And I'm not gonna be blackmailing to get my own son back. She expects regular visitation rights after that little stunt she pulled. Good morning, well and all. Look at Leon. <laughs> You're just what we need to brighten our day. Speak for yourself. That's why I came by to brighten Jean's day with some good news. You're fortunate to have a good friend like me with some clout. Yeah, is that clout or gout? <laughs> cute, cute. Uh, everything's all set for you to move into your new house mm -hmm. in the old neighborhood. Leon, please, I'm not in the mood for any jokes. You know we're not ready to move in that house for at least another three weeks. Gene, if you don't believe me, call the bank. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is sign the final papers and move in. Is tomorrow too soon? <laughs> tomorrow? Hey, you're already packed. Uh, I'm on my way to give Mama the good news. Hey, hold on. I can't wait to see her. Oh, both of you. Look, uh, I appreciate all your influence, Leon, but I think I can take it from here. I want to be the one to tell Mom and Jimmy about this. Oh, I do all the dirty work and you get all the glory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, look, give me a call when you uh, set a moving date. Hey, Leon. Uh, and let me be the one to tell the rest of the world, too. <laughs> sure, sure. See you later, Vicky. Later, Leon. <laughs>
Wow, what a surprise. Mm -hmm. Say, can you do a favor for me, little lady? Just name it. Don't say anything about this to anyone until I say it's okay, all right? So, the case of the annoying phone calls is closed? Yep, they talked it all out last night. No more phone calls. My, my. Well, one down and one more to go. I'm here this morning uh, on the case of uh, Lawson versus Davidson. State settlement's out of my league. Well, now, there's been some new developments. It was my extreme pleasure to be able to file a criminal report against Nancy Lawson this morning. What charges? Oh, such little things as uh, burglary, forgery, grand theft, and uh, conspiracy, for starters. Oh, I wanted to file charges a long time ago. Except that Terry Davidson wanted to settle out of court. Until now. Seems that even she has her limits. What do you mean? Well, you remember my telling you that um, Charles Carpenter and his daughter Miriam brought false charges against Terry's daughter, uh, charges of adultery? You said these two families don't get along. Well, guess who Terry saw coming out of her mother's house bright and early to the morning? Charles Carpenter. Was it a big secret that he and Nancy are close? Didn't you know about them? Carpenter was there when I went to uh, question Nancy about the Davison calls. You knew about it before we did. Oh, so that's the reason that Miriam went to see Terry and volunteered to testify against Nancy. It was revenge. Carpenter's daughter went to see Mrs. Davidson? Mm-hmm. Mrs. Mason spilled the beans about how Nancy stole those documents, changed all the wills, and destroyed the one after she stole it out of my office. Well, evidently, she and uh, Miriam Mason were friends. Looks like. Until a man got in the way. Oh, can you imagine taking up with a girlfriend's father? Oh. Poor Helen, whatever she is. <laughs> I tell you, this carpenter is a real hot number lately. He's uh, got a wife missing, his buildings are burned to the ground, and he is fooling around with this sweet young thing, Nancy Lawson. <laughs> Some sweet young thing. I know the type. And don't forget that snake in the grass, Harold Webster. Oh, I'd like to expose him for what he really is. Mrs. Lawson. I told you I don't know anything about this call, to Terry. Oh, I know. That's not why I'm here. Uh, can I come in? Sure. Your uh, friend isn't here. My friend? The older gentleman that was here the last time I was here, um, Mr. Carpenter. Why, should he be? No, I just wondered. Uh, I mean, this is business, but I was looking forward to uh, talking to you alone. He's a very lucky man. Oh, well, um, Charles and I are just friends, really. We're not married or anything. Come, sit down. Thank you. But it is Mrs. Lawson. Yes, well, I'm divorced. Good men are hard to find. Listen, I hope you don't mind, but I just have a couple of routine questions I have to ask for this upcoming court hearing. Well, why don't you talk with my attorney, Hal Webster? You know, these questions, they're so general. And, uh, I'd just much rather talk to you than him. Well, I suppose if they're so general, he's not gonna mind. Thank you. Now, uh, you were living with the, uh, the Davidsons, uh, prior to Mrs. Lindsay's death, right? Yes, that's right. Only temporarily, of course. Right. And then uh, you moved into this house immediately after her death. Yes. Well, uh, the house was willed to me. Did you choose to, to live with the Davises rather than your mother uh, just before she died? Uh, well, uh, Terry and I were very good friends. And, um, you know, this was because before she was so jealous about me getting the house. And uh, mother and I loved each other dearly, but she was very, very... Uh, uh, possessive, and she would have, it would have been stifling for me to live No, there. I understand. Uh, d so Mrs. Davison didn't know uh, that the house was being willed to you until when? Uh, until uh, we saw the will. And there were six copies, six copies of the will? Um, three. There was uh, one to tear, uh, one to mother, one to the attorney, and uh, one in the safety deposit box. Uh-huh. Apparently Mr. Dunbar couldn't find this copy. Well, I'm just assuming that that uh, country bumpkin of a lawyer had one. I mean, in any case, there was one in the safety deposit box. 
So, actually, you must have known that the house was going to you because you moved in before the will was read. Uh, yeah. I mean, no. Well, until I read it there Do before... Do you have Mrs. Lindsay's copy of the will? Hey, look it. I think you ought to talk to my attorney. I mean, these questions are getting to be a little bit more than general. I will. Alex, I've been looking for you all day. Terry. Yeah, I've been in surgery. Piecing together a broken knee. You're looking at lunch. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> yeah, what was it you wanted to see me about? Good news. Dennis Fraser won't be calling me or visiting me anymore. That is good news. I went to see him after work yesterday and we talked. Yeah, Terry, that could have been very dangerous. Now, uh, why didn't you ask me to go with you? I didn't know I was going to go until after I got home. Yeah, I'm sure confronting him was very painful for you. Well, it was, at first. But the more we talked, the more I realized the torment he's been going through. Oh, we had a beautiful talk. Sounds like a, a miracle. Well, I guess it was. The miracles of um, understanding and forgiving. You know, he couldn't cope with the fact that he caused the accident. Well, that would have been a tough thing for me to live with myself. He needed my forgiveness. Did you? Yes. Unbelievable. A drunken driver kills your husband, your mother, and you forgive him. My forgiveness was only part of what he needed, Alex. Mr. Fraser asked God to forgive him, and that made all the difference. Now he can sleep again, and so can I. Well, I'm glad it worked out so well for you, Terry. Of course, he's still got to face that manslaughter charge. Oh, he knows that. It's the law. But at least now he has inner peace. Well, now, maybe your life can get back to normal. Well, as normal as can be without Scott and Mother. Nice. You know who I am? Uh, how many guesses do I get? Three. Ah. I give up on this stupid thing. All right, I'll give you a hint. I've got blonde hair and I'm really cute. Julie Sawyer! Silly, oh. who's Julie Sawyer? That's a girl I know. You love her? No, you've stolen my heart. Sorry, I like Jimmy Baxter. Oh, you mean I've been thrown over by a third grader? Why'd you throw this thing anyway? Were you mad? <sighs> yeah, thanks. At God? What? I said, are you mad at God? I mean, I'd understand if you were. No. Why should I be mad at God? He, he didn't make my oil pan leak. No, I mean, he saved my daddy. But he let your daddy die. Doesn't seem fair. Can you explain it? No, Jenny, I can't. I don't think your mother would like you asking me these kind of questions. You're telling me. You should have seen what she did when I asked Dad. What'd she say? She said that I'd probably understand more when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So I figured you're grown up already. You'd know. <laughs> I'm not that grown up. You know, I don't think uh, anybody ever really knows. Well, if your grandma were here, we could ask her. She was really grown up. Mm -hmm. Hey! Gee, <laughs> this is fun. Maybe when you fix your car, you can tie it on the back and I'll ride it. You keep asking me questions like that. That's just what I'm going to do. You know, it's funny. What? People, people believe in God. But they can't see him and they don't always understand him. Well, you know, Jenny, we got to concentrate on what we do know. And we know that my mom, she, she needs help right now. You know, help making ends meet and cleaning up the place. God still loves us. He hears our prayers. We know what we need to know, that's all. But we don't know everything we want to know, do we? Nope, Jenny, we don't. Hey, get on. Let's go. Hang on. Oh, Jimmy, baby, I'm so glad you're back home. I had a lot of fun with Mom, but I missed you and Dad at the same time. Does that sound funny? Uh, not to me. 
you think Dad would be mad at me, Grandma? Um, hey, Kimmy, oh, hey, buddy, what are you doing at home? Does your mother know you're here? She dropped me off about 15 minutes ago. She didn't yeah. come in. Oh, that's, so tell me what happened, buddy. Did you just decide to come home on your own? Mom and I decided. I didn't plan to stay gone forever. Dad, you didn't give me time to explain uh. before you started fighting. I just wanted to stay with Mom longer. You see, Gene, Jimmy loves you so much he wanted to come back. Yeah. <laughs> And I love Mom. I wanted to be with her, too. Yeah, I understand. Dad, is it wrong to love you both the same? No, baby, it's not wrong. It's just that I was hurt when I, when I thought you were choosing your mom over me. Mom and I had a long talk about why she left and why she came back. Yeah? Mom's sorry for doing it, Dad. I forgive her, can't you? <sighs> well, look, Jimmy, we'll talk about that later, okay? But right now, you go get washed up. and Mom's going to start with those pots because we're going to eat out tonight. Okay. Jane, the boy is caught in the middle. Don't make it harder, boy. I know, Mama, I know. I will try to make it as easy as possible, all right? 